Hey guys, and welcome back to another Factorio workshop. As always, I'm here with Matt Zuri. Greetings. And today we have an interesting smelter design. This is somewhat similar to one we did previously in the fact that it combines uh, robots and uh, belts in the design to try to eliminate um, bot travel in a, opposed to a full bot based smelter. And uh, this is submitted by Truffles. It's a blueprint book here. and. He provides um, one little stamp like this. It is tileable. Uh, you can tile it just straight down or up like this. And uh, then he also provides a full setup over here, which we're not going to turn on, uh, but it is good to uh, show a few things for just kind of visual demonstration. But uh, yeah, so this guy, this uses belts um, to actually feed it like within the smelter, but then bots to deliver and pick up the actual materials going onto and off of the belt. So I'll let you kind of take over, Zuri, for any thoughts, comments, anything you have uh, in regards to this. OK, it's only slightly faster than the belt can handle. So you'll get this machine right here will stall and clog up, but that's fine. It's designed for the fully compressed blue butt, sorry, blue belt out. Mm -hmm. And the way it's designed is to greatly minimize the bot travel and it's something i've tried to explain to people and i'm not entirely sure myself but it sounds or it seems correct to me is that uh the bot computation time is linear with the number of bots and the average travel distance squared so if you can minimize the travel distance you can greatly enhance your performance of your base, you know, UPS wise. Yeah, definitely. So this is, uh, again, th this is the type of thing that's really hard to quantify without a ton of testing um, is, you know, is adding the belts in here, but eliminating a ton of bot travel actually a benefit, like a, a gain overall or not. And it, it's hard to know. We, we, we don't really know for sure, because again, it would take a pretty large amount of testing, um, which would be very tedious. We were talking earlier. And uh, and yeah, but so so this guy, this is a, a full setup. One of them, the, the small one over here does uh, 2.4 thousand a minute. That's the one that's on. And this is 10 stamps. So this does 24 thousand plate a minute from 20 thousand ore uh, because of the productivity. And uh, this is kind of where you can really see like the trains deliver in the middle, right? And then the bots just have to fly out to here rather than flying all the way to like the back of the smelters and stuff like a normal fully bot based smelter would be. Uh, however, this one does have nearly or over 500 belts in it. So again, it's, it's not, I'm not really sure if it's a gain or not. It's a very interesting concept though. Yeah. I'd like to see it tested out, but the only person I know that's done that sort of test is anti elites. Yeah, if anyone is interested in testing it out, uh, pretty much the best way we can figure to do it in the way Anti does it is you like take one of these builds on a completely empty map and you get ready to start up and you start it and run the game as fast as it will go, like game speed, to, to see like what the max UPS is and stuff. And then you take whatever build you're comparing it to on an another new world or and then do the same thing. and try to see which one does better but again it's very tedious and and there's many variables involved and such but uh but yeah so this uh it, it's pretty straightforward in terms of the belt and stuff just some undergrounding here for the insertion the output um outputs onto a belt and then side loads and then one outputs onto an underground which is kind of a nifty way of doing it actually and uh just because i know people may comment with the end ones here are not fully beaconed but that's fine because as Zuri said it actually is a little more than you need to compress a blue bell already so adding beacons would just be a complete waste of like power and stuff you might be able to get away with shaving off a single machine on the edge of this it'll it might be a little less than your max compressed belt though yeah i just thought of that and uh you're right it, it may end up less uh, but but would definitely be worth a try and uh that that i mean that pretty much covers it again it's a very interesting concept the one we had previously i'm going to see if it was the one down here and uh kind of this similar idea is uh you know maybe when used correctly belts combined with bots may be better than just bots on their own 
But uh, the bots do seem to be keeping up. This guy takes about 40 bots um, for this one little setup. So expanding out to this, it would take maybe four or 500 bots, which isn't too bad. Yeah, maybe up to 500 due to the how far it extends down south and top. Yeah, that w that is one little problem is it does then extend way out to the top, which kind of would be a little weird for the bots. Um, but that's pretty much it. One quick note uh, is when building this fully, uh, you can actually push these up against the rail by one more tile on either side to reduce bot travel by two tiles total. Uh, these robo ports can be right up against the rail like that. So I believe that does it. Uh, again, very interesting design, definitely worth playing around with this type of stuff. And uh, overall, very good. They, I mean, they asked, um, Troubles asked, they were kind of like, well, you know, I don't know if it was an improvement overall or not. And it's hard to say. Uh, I mean, do you, do you have like a general extrapolated answer, Zuri, or are you just gonna, not, not really sure? Uh, yeah, I'd have to test it out. I have no idea. All right, well, that's going to do it, guys, unless you have any other comments. Nope. All right. As always, thanks for watching. We hope you enjoyed. Love to your thoughts down below. Very interesting build, uh, this type of thing. But uh, until next time, we will uh, catch you later. Later.